in previous video, uh, we have learned um, the conditional distribution of the arrival time given that uh, uh, one event has occurred up to t. And we've learned that it's uniform distributed. To use a figure to illustrate um, this, it's essentially knowing, and this is time, and we start our clock at zero, and we know that up to time t, uh, one event has happened during this time interval. Uh, this is uh, um, n of t is uh, 1 here. Then this event is equally likely uh, to be happened on any of the time um, from 0 to t, and this is a, a uniform distribution. And today um, we're asking a new question, that is uh, uh, if n of t is n, and this means uh, n events have happened up to t. Alright, and now um, we're curious of uh, the joint distribution of the uh, arrival times S1, uh, S2, up to uh, Sn, where Sn for any n is the sum, it's the arrival time, not inter-arrival time, and the arrival time is the sum of uh, uh, inter-arrival time. To do this, uh, we have to uh, review a formula uh, we used in our previous quarter. Uh, that is, how do we uh, compute the uh, conditional distribution? Um, this is a conditional distribution of x given uh, n. And I want to emphasize that this x is a continuous random variable, and this n is a discrete random variable. It means that it takes discrete values, and this n is exactly like our counting process. Then um, the conditional uh, PDF x given n of little x of little n, so here I'll write down uh, the little n, the meaning is n equals little n, uh, can be computed by uh, definition, which is uh, the limit of epsilon goes to zero of this capital X is between little x and little x plus epsilon given n is n divided by the length of this interval. And this is exactly the definition of PDF, which is uh, um, the derivative of uh, CDF. And now we're curious uh, computing this capital S1 to uh, Sn given this n of here, the variable is little s1, little s2, dot, 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 uh, little sn, uh, given this n of t is n, okay? And, and we will apply uh, the same thing, except uh, uh, this time we have uh, this limit, and that is uh, um, they have a much longer limit. We still have uh, this epsilon uh, go to zero, but this time uh, our probability is uh, um, k 
capital S1 is between little s1 and uh, uh, s1 plus uh, epsilon. And capital S2 is uh, um, between s2 and s2 plus epsilon and etc. Okay. And here I'll write down this Sn, and Sn is uh, uh, between S sub n to S sub m plus epsilon. And given this n of t is uh, n. And then divide this whole probability divide by uh, epsilon to the nth power, because uh, we have a uh, um, n random variable joint distribution right there. And to compute uh, this event, this event given this condition, the probability, uh, let me draw a figure here. This simply means if we draw a uh, time axis, if this is t, and this is when we start our clock, it simply means, um, and this is S1, this is S1 plus epsilon. This simply means our first event happens here. So S1 is here, and maybe say S2 is right here. It's between S little S2 plus and little S2 plus epsilon. Our S2 is here. Okay, and dot, 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 and our S. N, which is our nth event, happens here. And this is a capital S N. And we want to compute the probability of this event. We have to use the memoryless property of, uh, um, of the Poisson process, or rather to say uh, stationary increment and independent increment. Um, for example, if the first event happens here on this interval, it simply means one thing, that is nothing happens here. And similarly, we have uh, observed no event here, and etc. And lastly, we have observed no event right there. And as a result, if we denote the top event as A, okay, so then the uh, numerator here is P of A, and then P of A can be then computed by uh, the following thing. Uh, it means simply um, we have zero event between uh, let me use the uh, in so we have zero events in uh, zero to little s1 And uh, then comma, and then we have one event happened in during this S1 to S1 plus epsilon. Okay, and then we have zero event in S1 plus epsilon to uh. S2, and then we have uh, one event happened during uh, S2 to S2 plus epsilon, and etc. And lastly, we have uh, uh, one in S, S sub n, S sub n plus epsilon, and the condition is uh, uh, 
is n of t is n, uh, it means we stop our clock here. Okay. That's our condition tells us, and it simply means we have zero event in S sub n plus epsilon to t. So we have translated um, our event of interest in this, and now we can use uh, independent increment. Because all these time, all right, all these time, and we can add, for example, uh, I think I should add uh, a close interval right here. Uh, whenever it's uh, one event happen, it's a uh, close interval. Okay. Because they are disjoint. So by independent increment, this is the same as a probability of uh, zero in uh, uh, zero event in zero to s one times the probability of one event in uh, s one to s one plus epsilon and dot 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 uh, times uh, probability of uh, one event in uh, s sub n to s sub n plus epsilon and then times uh, zero event in uh, s sub n plus epsilon to t. And now we use, uh, we can simply use uh, the stationary increment. Stationary increment simply says the following. The number of events happen. So the number of events uh, happened from uh, S to T uh, is of the same distribution. Um, where number of event uh, in zero to t minus s, okay. And now we can uh, write down uh, the formula by Poisson distribution, and keep this in mind. Um, we have. Let me write down a text box here. That is uh, uh, n sub t minus s for any s that is uh, less than t. Um, it follows the Poisson distribution with rate lambda times t minus s. So as a result, uh, if we have zero event and here, we simply we just uh, plug in uh, the Poisson distribution formula, and for zero event from uh, zero to s one, it's lambda s one raised to the zero power, zero factorial, which is one, and then it's e raised to the lambda uh, s one, okay. um, and this. Uh, corresponds to our first event right here. And now the second one is we have one event in uh, S1 to S1 plus epsilon. Now we plug in uh, the formula. And this is uh, lambda epsilon. Okay. The, the length of the time, the length of the time here is epsilon. And so as a result, this is e to the um, minus lambda epsilon divided by one factorial, and one factorial is one as well. And let's continue. Okay, uh, the space feels a little uh, bit cramped, but uh, uh,
let me move um, this thing right here. And then this is multiply with uh, one event. We have uh, one event uh, and zero event here and one event here. And let's continue this uh, computation. So we have uh, zero event from S1 plus Epsilon to um, to S2, so we have zero event here, and this is S2 subtract S1 subtract epsilon, and this is uh, uh, this is lambda, um, S2 subtract S1 uh, subtract epsilon, then raised to the zeroth power, and we have zero factorial e to the minus lambda, uh, S2 subtract S1 subtract epsilon. Okay, and then multiply with uh, lambda epsilon uh, e to the minus epsilon divided by one factorial, and it and this uh, goes on and on, and up to uh, the nth event. That is, uh, we have uh, one event uh, happen during this, um, which is the same as. All the previous this event of uh, one event happened during these uh, small intervals, the probability. And now, lastly, is uh, we have zero event happen here, and that is uh, uh, lambda of t minus s sub m minus epsilon. This raised to the zeroth power, zero factorial, e to the minus lambda, t minus s m minus epsilon. Now something uh, interesting will happen, and that is uh, um, if we look at, uh, if we notice uh, the pattern, so we have a minus lambda uh, s1. And here we have a minus uh, lambda minus epsilon, minus, epsilon uh, minus lambda epsilon, right? But right in the next term, we have a minus lambda times uh, these two, which is a plus, and which cancels with uh, these two. And then in next term, uh, we will have something uh, with s three subtract s two cancels with. Uh, I mean the S2 uh, event right here, okay? And in the end, what happens is, and by the way, uh, all these terms are one, and in the end, we're left only with, because uh, n event has happened, we will have uh, n of these uh, factors. So that is uh, lambda epsilon raised to the nth power. And then we'll have what is uh, everything will be cancelled. Uh, right here, right here. Cancelled with this and then lambda minus lambda s2 minus lambda epsilon will cancel with uh, the term for uh, S sub three. The only thing left is this e to the minus lambda t right here. Okay. So this is e to the minus lambda t, and all the denominator these factorial are just one, so we don't worry about it. Okay, and now we have a pain uh, while we want uh, that is this guy. So what happens is we can look back 
at uh, um, this event right here, we can rewrite the top as probability of uh, A um, and N of T is N divided by the probability of N of T is, uh, is N. And the top uh, probability is exactly what we have computed right here. So let me uh, correct one thing, and this is a uh, uh, probability of A uh, intersecting with N of T is little n. Is this conditional probability? And this is lambda epsilon to the nth power divided by uh, e to the lambda t. And then the bottom is nothing but uh, e to the uh, lambda t and n factorial and then uh, lambda t raised to the nth power. So what happens is uh, by definition what we need to do is we simply let epsilon go to zero and then we divide an epsilon to the nth power here so we have an extra epsilon uh, to the nth power here and we let epsilon go to zero We couldn't help but notice uh, many things will be canceled. So for example, e to the minus lambda t and e to the minus lambda t here, and uh, lambda raised to the nth power, lambda raised to the nth power. And this epsilon to the nth power with epsilon to the nth power. What's the only thing left is, because epsilon is gone, so the limit is gone, the only thing left will be uh, n factorial divided by t to the nth power. And now we have uh, obtained the conditional distribution if uh, given we have n event um, happen up to time t and what is our conditional distribution. And this is exactly the PDF of the order statistics uh, which is featured in 130B uh, last quarter. And uh, uh, they are the order statistics of uh, N are uh, independent and identically distributed. uniform random variable uh, on 0 to t. What this mean is uh, um, uh, now if we let uh, uh, y1, y2, y3 and yn, they are iid uh, uniform distribution uh, from 0 to t, then this s1, s2, s3 uh, up to sn is the order statistics of these uh, n random variable in that uh, S1 is the smallest uh, among this uh, Y sub i from i to n. 
and S2 is the second smallest uh, among all the Y's and etc. And we have S sub N is the biggest among these uh, and random variables. Um, this is simply because uh, the SN, which is arrival time, uh, they are in order. Okay. We have this S1, is uh, less than, uh, S2 is uh, less than, and because we assume no, uh, like an uh, event does not happen, two events don't happen simultaneously at one time point, so we have uh, this.